coming out of 2019 and into 2020, one game was a definite highlight for me, Devil May Cry 5. From the get-go, the announcement of this game had me feeling hyped beyond belief. The original E3 announcement was everything I hoped to see for the franchise after some questionable decisions and pathways, with the trailer displaying high-octane action, music that got your blood pumping, and cheesy cutscene action sequences that featured the return of some familiar faces and new and interesting ones too. But despite my love for the character and for his return to the series, Nero, as cool as he is, wasn't enough to truly satisfy me here. Sorry Cody Rhodes. Dante was the real main event to this trailer and his appearance towards the end signified one thing. Devil May Cry was back and this was proven by the reception to this title when it eventually launched. Developed by Capcom, the Devil May Cry series has had an interesting evolution, beginning as a Resident Evil game and warping into the action game we see before us today. The franchise, like many others mentioned on this channel today, features a consistent feature, Dante. His strong design and characterization would be a huge factor in what made the game just that popular. Beginning as Tony Redgrave, not too far off Resident Evil's Chris Redfield, the character's name would change to Dante in tribute to Dante Alighieri, one of the most important poets of the Middle Ages, as the game shifted into its unique identity separate from Capcom's zombie shooting franchise. The design of Dante is based off of three criteria set by series creator Hideki Kamiya. One, a long stylish coat to make the character showy and there's no denying a long leather jacket will have that effect. This would go toe to toe with the game's action based rankings that require you to be stylish as possible. 2. British Heritage Dante is a character who is witty yet traditionally fighting. 3. He doesn't smoke cigarettes. This is a staple of the series up until today, but Camille wanted Dante to be cool in the face of smoking, quite the opposite to how TV, film and media typically portray those who partake in the habit. It's a noble inclusion and goes against the inspiration for the character. Dante was inspired by Cobra of the Japanese manga and anime Space Adventure Cobra, sharing multiple traits such as colour schemes and attitude. Cobra was notorious for smoking a cigar, obviously as mentioned, Dante was the opposite. For some reason in interviews, Kamiya has never really mentioned Dante's hair colour on an important level like one of these points. But along with a few other features such as ebony and ivory pistols, Dante would have a number of reappearing design staples across his history. This wasn't always the case though, but we'll come back to those dips in the road soon enough. As always, while I'll cover the main titles and a few other side entries, always the chance I may miss a version. If you think there's a really good Dante design that I've missed, just let me know in the comments section below. Also, just a note, I'm choosing to focus on Dante's human depictions today rather than his devil trigger demon form. If you'd like me to do that too, just let me know below or click the poll that's present in the video. I'm the artist Mark Flynn and let's find out which Dante design I think truly is best. As always, please 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 don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with the channel and help me on my journey to 20,000 subscribers. The original Devil May Cry would release in 2001 for the PlayStation 2 and give us an introduction to Dante for the first time. The son of Sparta made an impact with stylish garments and bold colours that would become staples of his design. These features included red pants with two black belts wrapped around his right thigh and a matching red coat with upturned collar and black cuffs. Under this coat he rocked a black long sleeve shirt with a red vest which was again completed with black buckles. The ensemble was complemented by a combination of black belt, gloves and high boots. This is a solid initial design design for Dante and in-game makes the character stand out well from the relatively dull and somber looking environments. It's a great template that they continue to build on to this day. Dante's skin does appear to be quite tanned in this game. Given he's meant to be British, I'm not sure how accurate this really is. We don't know what the sun is. I think they may have realised this themselves as future iterations of the character were much paler. In the follow-up title to the original released in 2003, also for the PS2, Devil May Cry 2 saw a similar looking Dante to the original with some minor alterations and more pronounced features. The character used a similar outfit for starters, again made up of reds and blacks with some new key details. The jacket features deeper red colouring and includes two coattails this time as opposed to one and his vest is also much darker than it was previously too. The front of the vest is more closed off than the previous version, it also features a high necked collar which looks a bit more gothic and standoffish. As well as these jacket changes, he now has a few new accessories such as a skull themed belt buckle and black gauntlet shaped gloves. His hair also is much thicker this time around, with his bangs parted in front of his right eye. Channeling his inner emo, this is a slight difference from his somewhat parted hair in the original Devil May Cry. I'm slightly fonder of this look for Dante in the game itself, I think the face especially looks a bit more improved from the first game, though Dante is a bit too slim for my liking if I'm completely honest. I find he looks a bit too vampiric. 
Devil May Cry as a series really came into its own with the third entry that was released in 2005. The game was much cheesier and action film like, with Dante really stepping up his demonic Bugs Bunny style form. To better suit his immature style, this time he was presented in a younger form as the game took the narrative pathway of being a prequel. This younger, reckless Dante has some notable changes. He drops his previous vests in favour of… nothing. He goes topless under his jacket this time around, displaying his younger muscular physique. Such appeal, he is truly a waifu for leifu. In fact, he doesn't even start this game with his jacket on. When he does put it on, changes can be seen, got a new red belt buckle and on the back he has a new set of brown holsters for his guns. Finishing off the rest of the youthful get up are tan jeans, black fingerless gloves and combat boots, which suit this edgier version of the character perfectly. This time around his hair better resembles the first game, though his bangs are slightly longer and brushed down over his eyes. This design builds upon the previous ones immensely and is easily a top contender for the best designers as far as I'm concerned. It's a look that perfectly suited the essence of Devil May Cry. The 2008 release of the fourth entry in the series saw Dante take a minor step back and the debut of a new protagonist for the Devil May Cry series, Nero. The younger character did take a majority of the limelight and even shares a few similarities of his own with Dante, but that didn't stop the old lead from showing up along the way, sometimes as a rival of our new hero, sometimes as a helping hand, and always a form of comedy and ridiculousness. This time around Dante took on a much more mature look, as a middle aged character with all the spirit of the youthful form previously seen in 3. In a 2008 interview with 1UP, Tatsuya Yoshikawa, the designer of Dante and DMC4, went into more detail surrounding the decision to age the character in the way they did. He said, Said, when I played the first Devil May Cry game, I loved the way Dante could handle himself in any situation. He is the ultimate Hollywood action superstar. In this installment, we really wanted to make Dante the coolest guy in the world. So first the team asked, what makes a man cool? Men are really cooler, stronger and wiser when they are a bit older, perhaps in their 30s or 40s. Almost a wise sage-like deity in this game. Overpowered beyond belief, the agent of Dante led to an interesting dynamic between him and the new protagonist, Nero. And this older take was established via a few changes to his design once again. Hair-wise, this was now parted yet again, a slight contrast to the teen-style hair of DMC3. The character also had stubble for the first time, as creators didn't think he would care to spend time shaving. His coat was now short-sleeved, though features its most detailed depiction thus far, with numerous golden studs. He wears a black shirt underneath as opposed to vests or no vests, along with black fingerless gloves once again, another skull belt and some black loafers. After a lengthy absence in 2013, Capcom opted to reboot the Devil May Cry series rather than continue with it on the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. This game took place in an alternate dimension with some similar and different, very different in places, characters taking the centre stage. This saw the biggest change possible in regards to Dante, and ooh boy, the reception sure was a negative one. Ninja Fury were tasked by Capcom to redesign the character, so we got a western inspired Dante for the first time. This Dante was created to be more relatable to teenage demographics, and as a result, most of Dante's original design was stripped away in favour of a look that more resembled the frontman of a 2013 rock band. This edgy new Dante wore a black long jacket with a grey vest top, dark skinny jeans, brown boots and a necklace. The biggest change came with a significant haircut and the new short dark hair that accompanied the rest of this modified outfit. Features such as his guns, ebony and ivory are still there, but without them at a first glance, you wouldn't have a clue that this was the same character. When entering his Devil Trigger form, this Dante did adopt a more traditional colour scheme, though the extra silver hair and red jackets were limited to being a power up only. While I do think that the hatred of this design is somewhat overblown, I do think Capcom were quite careless with its implementation. Dante was a very popular character, and a reimagination wasn't something people were clamouring for. Scenes in the game that mocked this only set up the character for failure, which is actually something that will factor into one of my next character design retrospectives too. The inclusion of this version of Dante in PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale was also mind-boggling. What was meant to be a cross-promotion in a game that was basically Smash Brothers with PlayStation characters, this character being present without traditional Dante just didn't feel right. It's likely this just bred more anger about the character's existence. Sorry dude. As its own design, I think this Dante looks pretty cool, and certainly does have a level of style to him. It's also the most advanced Dante we've seen graphically so far, but it isn't the Dante for me, and it's far away from being his best design.
Now, outside of the main Devil May Cry series, Dante has made appearances in a few other games and bits of media. While most of these are usually recreations of how he has looked in the games themselves, these are often done in new and interesting art styles. The Marvel vs Capcom series highlighted Dante in a few of its entries, with a Devil May Cry 3 inspired Dante making appearances in Marvel vs Capcom 3 and Marvel vs Capcom Ultimate. In 3, the 3D render better resembles a comic book character, while Infinite goes for a much more realistic looking depiction. I personally wish Dante had been around for Marvel vs Capcom 2, which to me had some of Capcom's peak pixel sprite work. Speaking of sprite work, Dante would also go on to feature in the crossover strategy game Project X Zone for the 3DS. This title would show off a 2D sprite of the character that appears to most closely resemble Dante's classic depiction from the original game, but in simplified pixelated glory. The original Dante design would also feature in the Devil May Cry anime series that was produced by Madhouse. This is again an interesting look at the same design in a slightly different art style. The best of the bunch for me has got to be the character's appearance in the PS2 version of Beautiful Joe. While Dante's addition to the side-scrolling superhero beat-em-up game is a bit of a confusing one, the depiction of the character did have a lot of toon like charm. His outfit appears to be influenced by both the first and second Devil May Cry games, with features such as his hair being more pronounced and eye-hiding. Yes, I just love me some cell shading. We opened with talk about this one, and we'll end with it too. Devil May Cry 5 hit consoles and PCs in 2019. Not only was it a great return to form for the franchise, but it also returned Dante to his previous design for the most part. The key difference here is realism. Outside of the experimental DMC, Devil May Cry 5 pushed graphic capabilities for the series to new highs, and in doing so created the most detailed character model for Dante yet. This is a slightly aged Dante from Devil May Cry 4, and it shows through in some of his wardrobe. He has the same red jacket from his previous appearance, which has been suitably faded by Father Time. Alongside this, he wears a black Henley t-shirt, black driving gloves with accompanying bandages, a black belt with golden buckle, trousers and heeled boots. Full of stubble yet again, and given the graphic style was rooted in reality, Dante's face was based off of actor Adam Cowie. Can't really say I see it though, to be fair. I can't lie, it's probably just me, but this version reminds me of Keith Urban for some reason. I used to walk past a poster for this tour in a London underground tunnel every morning on the way to work and every time I saw it, I ended up hearing Devil Trigger in my head. So that's all the designs for today, and I've got to say, this really is a hard decision for me. I'm all about the ridiculous action hero. I love the design from Free, and think that is a great look for Dante. As cheesy as it is, the topless look under the bright red jacket fits the youthful tone and silly dialogue far too well, but I also have a fondness for middle-aged Dante too. I think these designs are more well-rounded and just love the presentation of the character as this grizzled, cocky and confident veteran of the demon hunting game. But while I absolutely love the costume from Devil May Cry 4, specifically the cowboy western inspired getup, I have to give this one to Dante's most recent outing. It's a decision I'm making based largely on its art style, but the realism in this game has breathed a new life into Devil May Cry when it needed it most, and in turn, has saved the character. The weird mismatch of over the top action with incredibly realistic character models is the perfect juxtaposition, and this Dante, aged, vulnerable and still brash and arrogant, is the star of the show yet again. His casual choice of outfit better portrays his mantra of him not having a care in the world, his hair is longer in a way that's badass, the stubble makes him look cooler, basically, I just wish I was him. Though in a perfect world, I'd love to see his outfit from 4 make an appearance too. So that's it from me, but what did you think? Do you agree with me? Is there another design for Dante that you prefer? Are there any other characters you're dying to see? Let me know in the comments below, or alternatively, head on over to my Discord. At this time, I'd just like to thank my patrons who helped let me spend so much time making these videos and provide that extra level of support, with a special shout out going out to Top Hat Gaming Man and Tugboat Slade who are donating at my top tier. If you'd like to join them or just help me out, please head on over to my Patreon. If you just want to help me out as a one-off, please head on over to my Kofi. 